heart, just like the pastor was sharing, there is always something more. But it's dependent on our hunger and our desire. Father, we thank you. Please pray from the depths of your heart. So Lord, let me contact something this morning. Something that will last my lifetime. Open my eyes to see. Open my ears to hear. Let there be an encounter of the Spirit. Let there be an effulgence of the weight of your glory. Dimensions that will be evidences of your presence in my life. There is no pretending. Lord, we thank you. Great God, we bless you. We bless you. that regular human beings walk with. There are, the Bible says, talking about the celestial bodies, it says, even among the stars, one star can differ from another in glory. Hallelujah. There are all kinds of bodies. He said there are terrestrial bodies, there are celestial bodies. There is one glory that belongs to the sun. There is another kind of glory that belongs to the moon. Then the stars have their dimensions of illumination and glory. And the Bible says, even among this realm of stars, they differ from one another, not in structure, in glory. Hallelujah. So as you sit under the word, something is happening to you. There is a change. There is 
there is an understanding, there is an alignment. And this is what God will help us experience this morning. Hallelujah. I want to talk about a few things that will help us to be very, very effective as ambassadors in this kingdom. When we talk about carrying the glory, it's not really something mysterious. There are exact standards that God expects from us. And there are principles that will help us there. And I trust that God will teach us something this morning. I've been captured by your love I can't explain. Now you have me and I'm forever changed. I've abandoned everything I ever knew. Now I surrender. This life is not my own. I belong to you. I belong to you. I belong to you. Lord, I belong. Life is not my own To you I belong I give myself I give myself to you Lord, my life is not my own To you I belong And I give myself I give myself to you Everything, everything to you, to you for your glory. Hallelujah. You have my everything. You have my everything. You have my everything. You have my everything. Take all of me. All of me, Lord, you have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord, you have my everything. You gave your everything, so I give my everything. You gave your everything, I give my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord, you have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. Anoint my everything. Use my everything. I give my everything. Take my everything, take all of me, all of me, Lord, you have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. Take my everything, refine my everything, review my everything. Take all of me, take all of me, Lord. Take all of me, all. The meeting is already going on. It's not just a song, it's an initiation into an experience. All of me, Lord. All strings, please, just strings. Take all of me, Lord. Take all of me. Ref- 
find my everything. Prune my everything. Would you build my everything? It's a song that doesn't have stanzas. It's your hunger that creates new stanzas to the song. All of me, Lord. He gave his everything. Would you give your everything? He gave his everything. Would you give your everything? Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me. Take all of me. Take all of me. Take all of me, take all of me, use all of me, use all of me. Anoint all of me, anoint all of me, you have my everything. All of me, refine all of me, define all of me, and grace all of me, lift all of me, open all of me to dimensions of your spirit, empower all of me, humble all of me, bless all of me. Father, there is a cry from the earth realm to the heaven. Take all of me, refine all of me, I dedicate all of me. I surrender all of me, I lay down all of me, I sacrifice all of me, till I am consumed by nothing, nothing else but you, all I want. Take over, take over, till I am by nothing, nothing. Sing it one more time, all we want to see, all we want. Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. Breathe on me. Breathe on me, Lord, I look to you for 
body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me, take my body, my soul, and my spirit, would you breathe, please play strings, 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 I just want to hear the sound of strings, please, take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. Worthy Worthy is the Lamb, worthy, worthy is the Lamb, glory, glory to the Lamb, glory, glory. Glory, 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 glory to the Lamb. Sera mutana na Maria, sera na mosto kala Maria ne mana na mana na Maria. Glory to the Lamb. You're the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. You're the Holy Ghost. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place, have your way, have your way, breathe on us now, breathe on us now, change our hearts now, change our hearts. Take our bodies, our souls, our spirit, breathe on us. Take our bodies, our souls, our spirit, breathe on us. Breathe on us. Breathe on us. Let's be the name of the Lord. Father, we raise a cry from the depths of our heart. My altar is calling you, O oh God. My secret place is calling you, O oh God. 
my worship is calling you, oh God. My altar is calling you, oh God. Take my praise, oh God. Take my praise, hey, da, 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 my sacrifice is calling you, oh God, my yieldedness is calling you, oh God. My sacrifice is calling you, dear Lord. This altar is calling you, oh God. Take our praise today. Take our praise, oh God. There is something from within us that calls for you, oh God. There is something from within us that calls for you. Hallelujah. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever, Lord. Simple song of worship says, I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever, Lord. I'll serve you forever. I'll serve you forever. I'll serve you forever. Lord. Would you join me sing? I'll serve you forever. I'll serve you forever. I'll serve you forever. Lord. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever, Lord. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever. And I will seek you, Lord. I'll seek you forever. 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 Just the voice I love you forever. Forever, I love you forever. I love you forever, Lord. One more time, I love you forever. I love you. Yes, I do. I love you forever. I love you when they're about to join a man and a woman in holy matrimony, there is a question they ask them. Are you willing to take this woman that for the rest of your life you are joined? And some people say in sickness and in health, in poverty and in pain, they are asking the man and the woman, they are about to join them in a covenant that cannot be broken. Are you willing? Have you considered the cost implication of this journey? 
And the man said, I am willing. This is it. I have thought about everything. We've had time to work together. I've seen this woman angry. I've seen her under pressure, but I've made a decision that in spite of everything, it's not, I was not coerced. It was a product of revelation. This is what this song is saying. That Lord, I'm not just learning about your ways. It doesn't matter. Bless me or no bless me. Prosperity or no prosperity. There is a predetermination. This is a song that is born out of revelation. The pastor said it's a meeting of encounter. The word is already going on. There is something happening to you. There are shifting. There is a reorganization of your Christian experience. And this is what we are achieving this morning. I love you forever. I love you forever. Ministry or no ministry. Power or no power. Anointing or no anointing. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever. Wife or no wife. Husband or no husband. I love you forever. I love you forever ministry expansion or no ministry expansion crowd or no crowd title or no title programs or no program prophecy or no prophecy man of god or no man of god all of these things are useless compared to the excellency of our love for him forever i love you forever I love you. And if they never call you a man of God, you serve him forever. Sitting at the back or sitting at the podium with a ministry of your own or not. Totally irrelevant. Lift the voice and sing. I'll serve you forever. I'll serve you forever. I'll serve you. Forever, and we will seek you, say, I'll seek you forever. I'll seek you forever. Listen, let me explain something to you, Pastor. It makes a lot of sense to seek God when things are not working, when you're looking for ministry expansion, and people want to enter their whatever they are railroad or Canaan land or you know any place you see when you begin to seek God because of the obviousness of your deficiency something compels you but there is a level you get to that even men will testify that the hand of God is upon your life and if your pursuit for God is not tied to something eternal there will not be an impetus to push you further this is why we are saying I will seek you Lord when it comes to seeking you it has nothing to do with ministry dimensions even if I raise 100 dead people in one day it will not change my passion are you getting my point now? You're going to pray and say, Lord, I refuse to tie my pursuit for anything in time. Sing, I'll seek your faith. I'll seek you forever. 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 From your heart before the breakthrough comes and after it comes it doesn't make any difference before the anointing comes and after it comes it doesn't make any difference before the power comes and after it comes before the influence comes and after it comes before the prestige comes and after it comes it doesn't make any difference Just a voice to say, I'll seek you forever. I'll seek you. Listen to what you are singing. Forever, not for one year, not until ministry gets established, not until people begin to call you MOG, not until you begin to go out and so on and so forth, not until you get the job or the husband or the wife, not until you enter certain deep realms of revelation. Forever 
I'll seek you. How could I stop seeking his face? I love him forever. I love him forever. Let ministry go. Let titles go. Let Rema go. Let revelations go. Let visions go. I tell you sincerely, I care less about all of those things. seeking him his face is not the same as everything around his glory no you can seek everything close to his face and it can still be idolatry the excellency of your pursuit is when you seek him truly and you seek to see his kingdom come pray this song for one minute in your heart the Lord I love you forever I care less about whatever else comes as a reward from your presence. It's not as important as your presence and your faith and your power and your glory and your wisdom. I love you with all my heart, with everything that I have. There's no pretense in this. Love of my life, you are the hope that I cling to. You mean more than this world to me. Sing it on to him. Stop. Listen to what you said. You know what silver and gold is? This life depends a lot on silver and gold. The Bible says money is a defense and wisdom is also a defense. The difference between the two is that wisdom adds to its defense life. Hallelujah. There is a lot that you can do with money in this life. So when you say I love you more than silver and gold, do you really mean it? We're going to repeat that song again in case you just pass it without thinking about it. More than silver and gold. Do you know what people have done because of silver and gold? Do you know what pastors have done because of silver and gold? Do you know what anointed men have done because of silver and gold? Do you know what those genuinely called by God have done because of silver and gold? Do you know how many people have, li- have left God because of silver and gold? Do you know that this is the pursuit of many people in this country? How can you just say, I, w- I will not trade you for silver and gold? Think well before you sing this song. So that if by adventure you didn't mean what you were saying, don't get back, don't feel offended. It's time to keep quiet and say, Lord, when it gets to that part of the song, I will keep quiet. says, I would not trade you for silver and gold. And then he says, I would not trade you for riches untold. Ah, the one they told you is already affecting you. You are now saying even the one they've not yet told me. Please tell the truth in this song. You're ready to sing it? I know it's a very simple song. You have it on your phone. But I want you to sing from the depths of your heart. You mean more than this world. Sing it. Please be seated.
seated. Let us close our time. I want to share with us this morning a few keys. Hallelujah. I've always I've always been very please listen. I've always been very touched at how and why God will reveal himself so much to certain people in this earth realm. While on one side there is a deficiency of his presence and his power and his glory, certain people seem to seem they seem to have somewhat unlimited levels of access. It looks like God loves them so much. They are the kinds of people that the Bible says He suffered no man to do them wrong. There is something. It's not everybody. You know, we incorporate ourselves into that prophecy. At the end of this teaching, you will know that that scripture does not refer to everybody. There is something a man can do. There is a posture you can take in the spirit. And the Bible says He suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings. It's the Bible that says, don't rebuke an elder in public. So may, what will make God rebuke a king? What kind of alignment can a man have in the spirit that can make God even to rebuke a king? He reproved kings, saying, this kind of people, don't touch them. Neither do them harm. There is an investment they have in the spirit that I'm committed to protecting. And this is what I want to open us up to pray very briefly this morning. Hallelujah. I want to be relevant in the program of God. I don't want to just be hopping from meeting to meeting, from place to place. Right? And then the more people are talking about you, it looks like you are expanding. We must redefine our perspective to fit the standard of the kingdom. And we must know that God is not just seeking men and women of God. God is seeking ambassadors. People who are relevant, available and usable in his current agenda today, right now. The fact that you started with God is no guarantee that you'll be featured in all of his moves. Hallelujah. I taught a message, the secret of sustained glory. That factor that can make a man last through different moves of God. Every time there are new things that God is doing, there is always a shifting. Some people don't make it to the next batch for whatever reason. There are principles that we can get and know that will make you rise to a new level. It says, and I will shake the heavens and I will shake the earth. Every time we talk about that, we just think of money. Hallelujah. So the glory of the latter house. What house? Is it the temple? Is it you? Is it the ministry? Shall surpass. There is something that will make it greater. And we are going to examine those things. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Number one. I want to be very simple this morning so that we can get it and pray and trust God for His grace. Your love and passion for God. Please write it. You want to remain relevant in the program of God? You want to see the all-surpassing glory of God grow and increase in your life? Your love life and your passion for God must be examined thoroughly. Everybody say love for God. Say passion. Did you know that you can love somebody and not be passionate about the person? Are you following me now? There are parameters that prove passion. Passion is not something that is locked up just in the realm of the spirit. There are things that happen. You can know that a man is passionate about what he's doing. Your love and your passion for God. Hallelujah. John 21. When Jesus walked the earth. Look at me please. I hope you realize that most of the disciples of Jesus were the disciples of John. 
that room. And they came to John, not next. They were seeking what they did not even understand. And then the Bible tells us that this great guy shows up in town called Jesus. Is that true? Doing wonders, doing great things. And the disciples of John came to Jesus Christ and they started walking. The truth is, they were not passionate about him. They were using him as a ladder. Are you getting me? To find relevance. If paradventure Rome will now realize that they are not just ordinary people. And they got to a point where his influence was rubbing off on them and they were doing well. To a point that they even stopped the mother of Jesus and his brothers to come and see him is in your Bible. Is that true? And they were following Jesus and doing a lot of things. And many of them had a lot of strategies. All the benefits that they would get around him. And after a period of walking with him, they found out that he was not saying anything about their own commission. And then one day they said, Jesus, there's something we need to discuss. We have left everything to follow you. What is our cause in this thing? In other words, with time, the true intention of your heart, time is the revealer of the intention of men's heart. Hallelujah. So a man can start a ministry and tell everybody every kind of grammar. Let me tell you something. There's something about time. The intention of a man's heart cannot be locked in forever. Time has an ability to reveal the true intent in your heart. Hallelujah. And the Bible says they came to Jesus. To an extent that two had already gone ahead to meet their mother. And said, come and use your influence as a woman. And liars with Jesus Christ. Because from the way we see this man, one day he will conquer the Roman Empire. When he conquers them, please let's sit at his left and right. Remember? Listen. It's a very powerful message I'm bringing this morning. Then the mother of James and John comes to Jesus Christ and says, Would you grant that after you have become a conqueror, let the children sit at my left and right? And Jesus looked at her. He never said the seats are not available. He said, here's the condition. Can you drink of the cup and be baptized with the baptism? Notice, drinking of the cup talks of something that will happen within you. And then a baptism, something that will happen around you externally. It says, whoever satisfies that condition, the seats are available. Because she thought that position is free, cheap, and vacant. Just a gift. Take. Are you getting my point now? And then, when they had troubled the Roman government, Jesus looked at them one day and said, Gentlemen, I'm going. They said, No way. You can't go. You can't leave us like this. This is 2 0. One, we left fishing. Second, we have caused trouble and you are leaving. Listen, your love and your passion. When they came to catch Jesus Christ, a lot of them believed. They had seen him walk through the crowd. So they were very confident that it would be business as usual. When Jesus gave him, he said, What did they do? What did they do? They ran away. Not just sword. They ran away. Correct? Only one was able to follow Jesus even to the cross. John the Beloved. And all of them ran away. When they ran away, they were hoping and expecting that Jesus would resurrect. Otherwise, their lives were in jeopardy. So all these songs that you say, I love you more than everything, you better think well. Because there are many things that you need in your life. Are you getting something this morning? When God glorifies a man and keeps lifting a man, there is something that man is doing that is compelling the presence of God. The presence of God cannot stop being available. It's not free. I, I'm, I always challenge the body of Christ that this, this, this teaching that the things in the kingdom are just free, just access them. By faith does not just mean claiming. There are certain paths in the spirit that you walk. You get there. Certain things you get in the spirit are rewards. They cannot be imparted. Every man must pass through it. Are you getting what I'm saying? When Jesus resurrected, Peter said, I go a fishing. And the rest said, let's go with you. 
And while they were fishing, they, they were struggling and they didn't catch anything. John 21 now. And Jesus looked at them and said, Little children, have you any catch? And he said, Cast your net to the right side. And the Bible says they casted their net to the right side. And there was so much fish, the boat was about sinking. And they called on their partners to come. And they helped them. And when they looked, they perceived that it was Jesus Christ. And Peter washed off himself and ran and he came. And when he met Jesus, roasting fish and all of that. And then they started eating. Jesus asked him a question. John 21. You want to see the glory of God in your life. The all-surpassing glory of God. You don't claim glory. Glory is one of those things you don't claim. It's a resultant effect. Look at me. The psalm is speaking. said, blessed be the Lord, the angels who excel. Hallelujah. They excel. There are some things angels excel in. One is light. Two is strength. Do you know why they excel in light? I will tell you. They don't excel in life because God gives them. It's a product of something that has been happening over a long time. This is why even among those stars, the Bible says one star differs from another. Hallelujah. In the angelic cadre, their construction, their making, and the illumination that they produce differ according to their closeness to the presence of God. Are you getting me now? This is why the messenger angels are headed by the seraphs. Right? And the head of the seraphs is a cherubim. And the head of the cherubim is the woman. Right? And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of man is Christ. And the head of Christ is God. This is the organogram. This is how heaven operates. I follow, I follow what I'm saying now. And they excel in light. That's why when Gabriel came and Zechariah doubted him, he said, I am Gabriel. Will I, will I come with a lie? I just came from the presence of God. That light that can turn away every darkness. Now I bring you a word that is a product of my closeness. And now you doubt me. Are you getting that now? How can an angel have authority to shut the mouth of a priest who was anointed? There is something in God's presence. There is an access. Now you want to see that presence. There are conditions that you fulfill. This is what... This is what I'm helping us to see this morning. That that presence does not just come by crying or rolling. There are definite things that must be done. Number one is your passion for God. Challenges test and purge your passion for God. It's easy to say you love somebody. The Bible says you have continued with me. It's not interested about those who started. Those who continued. Hallelujah. John 21. Blessed Jesus. Thank you. Verse 15. If you are there, say Amen. Let me just read it quick. So when they had dined, Jesus said unto Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, he asked him a question. He said, Lovest thou me more than he never said, lovest thou my anointing, or lovest thou my charisma, or lovest thou the testimonies of the things I have done. He said, do you love me? Lovest thou me more than these? To understand that question, you must know what the these are. Lovest thou me more than these? The Bible begins to speak and say, the Gentiles run after these things. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 6 gives us a list of all of these things. He says the Gentiles run after them. So lovest thou me more than these things. Lovest thou me more than ministry. Lovest thou me more than anointing. Lovest thou me more than power. Lovest thou me more than revelation and remark. Lovest thou me more than the quest for titles. Lovest thou me more than husband and wife and job. Are you following me now? Lovest thou me more than opportunity or influence. He said, Peter, I have never doubted that you love me. Because of me, you caught somebody's ear. So, <laughs> this is not just a question of love. This is a question of the extent of the love. Passion. 
lovest thou me many of us love the lord we come to church we are workers in church we are ministers of the gospel but that passion that degree and let me tell you something the love for god is not just measured by how much you cry an emotional person who has no business with god can cry are you getting me your passion this was the secret of david a man who saw the glory of god in mighty dimensions he had so much passion for god he said i'd rather be a doorkeeper a doorkeeper what is it about the love for god he said as he began to sit down and think of listen the same way a man gets obsessed about a woman and he begins to put all kinds of poetry he says as the deer what was in his mind that made him to start comparing his love for god and the deer he says as the deer pants after the water brook, so my soul my soul long that's a love language that's not something you just use anyhow that that's deep intimacy hallelujah i've been captured by your love i can't explain now you have me and i'm forever changed i've abandoned everything i've ever known I surrender this life is not my own I belong to you powerful song what is your degree of passion for God would you say you love God with all your heart I'm telling you the truth this is one of the things that God showed me as the secret of his presence and his glory with a man. There are many people looking for revelations, buying tapes and messages to put together so that they can have something to preach. Nothing. Listen, let me tell you something. No matter what kind of rema you bring, there is a signature of his presence. That one is a love language that God stamps upon your life that follows every communication. So you can share John 3.16 and men know that this is more than it. This one is your reward for loving someone. Are you getting what I'm saying? Hmm. Many people believe that spirituality is all about your degree of saying, okay, let me tell you how the angels were created. They were created from this and that. Let me tell you the making of man and different dimensions. That's wonderful. But can I tell you, people have had revelations in our generation. Let me tell you the truth. There are, there are, there are people who have explored in and out in the spirit. But many of these people do not love God. Catherine Kuman will come and stand on the stage and by saying nothing, people are getting healed. See, every time Pastor Kola's wife cannot be around here, even if he has not seen her, something in him tells him, my wife is around here. Look, there are some languages that only intimacy can help you understand. Lovest thou me more than this. I went away for three days. Just three days. And all of you scattered. You have been with me for three and a half years. My exit for three days caused commotion and chaos. Many of you said all kinds of things. Lovest thou me more than this. I go for meetings a lot and I see lots of people who I know by the spirit that they do not love God. Hallelujah. A man can hate his wife and still be responsible. Responsibility is not necessarily love. There are just some things you have to do. You can beat your wife and pay the school fees of your children. It doesn't mean you love her. Passion. There are couples that when you see, you know these ones are in love. Even if they were not married. There are others you know they are just tied here as slaves forever. It's just that. It, it, it just has to be like that. This is how many people are working with God. Listen. Listen, this morning God is examining your degree of passion. I will show you a mystery. Many of us like mysteries. Let me show you how to get it. Hmm. 1 Corinthians 2. Uh, 
are my heart, desire and I long. First Corinthians 2, can we read? Verse 9, 1, 2, go. But as it is written, I have not seen. Stop! No degree of prophecy can show you certain things that only love can give. Are you getting me? He said, I, every time the Bible talks of I, it talks of vision, depths of revelation. The ability to, to access deep things in the spirit. But the Bible says, with all the eyes, he says, there are eyes that have not seen this very dimension. He said, nor ear heard. Neither has it entered. Some things have entered the hearts of men. But he said, this one has not entered. What God has in store for them that fast, for them that pray, for anointed people, for those opening ministries, for them that love. The word there is agape. It's not eros. Eros is, the, is, is lost. That means your desire to love something from what you will get from it. That's what it says. Love not the world. Eros. Do not use that thing. Don't come and fraternize and intercourse with the world. Because you think you will get something. And it lists all the things you can get. Agape is love without conditions. Love without conditions. Do you love me more than this? Do you love me more than this? Hallelujah. He said, I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of any man. Any man at all. Any man. Doesn't matter who. What God has in store for a kind of people. Those who are passionate about you. Those who are passionate about his house. Those who are passionate about his agenda. They are the kinds, the Bible says in Hebrews, that this earth is not worthy of. Because you see, when the Bible leaves the book of Hebrews, it tells us dangerous things that men and women have done. And it says there are certain people who say this earth. This morning God is asking you you want power you want grace I see lots of things that people do with power and anointing and I'm surprised I'm saying you mean this was the whole circumference of this suffering of fasting and prayer just to get power and misuse it I have seen blessings and wealth and all kinds of things tear people like a wild animal there is only one thing that can sustain certain levels of the glory Pastor, there are many people today who years ago there were voices around within the country and even outside and they just became silent. That's how God works when he finds out that what is coming to your life is about to destroy you. Every time he checks that love factor and it's not there, he knows it will destroy you. I really want to worship you, my Lord. You have won my heart and I am you. Forever and ever, I will love you. You are the only one who died for me, gave your life to set me free. So I lift my voice to you in adoration. You must examine your passion for God this morning. Your passion for God. There are so many. I don't know what kind of baptism has come upon, especially with the young people. This craze for ministry is driving people to hell. This craze to want to establish this, wanting to be called a Jew, wanting. There's so much pressure in the body of Christ. People want to show that the world is working. You know, all kinds of things. And there are others who are just loving God. And God cannot leave them. Day and night, He's saying. You, I, there's something in you that compels my presence. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. When you love God, there are many things that will come into your life cheaply. I'm teaching you a very cheap.
cheap route to entering levels of the glory. And in this season, these lovers of God, they are the ones who will access the blueprint of the new face of what the Spirit of God is doing. Your love for God, you must examine it this morning. How much do you love God? How much do you love the house of God? What can you give up for the sake of Him? This is the true test of love. What you can lay down. Greater love has no man. That means in this earth realm, this is the ultimate test of love. What you lay down for that love to continue. Are you getting my point? There is no true love without sacrifice. This is a language we don't like in church. We like free things. We like our wolf. Greater love has no man than this, than a man laid down. Where every time you say, Lord, I love you, he says, show me the things that you have left for me. Show me the archives of the sacrifices that you have made for me. This becomes the ultimate test of your passion. That's why I sang that song. I've been captured by a love I can't explain. Now you have me and I'm forever changed. Listen to this part. It says, I have abandoned everything I ever know. That you tell God, Lord, if it means me not getting married in this life for the sake of your agenda, it's no big deal for me. And say, Lord, if it means me cleaning this chair and that's all my assignment, if these are the demands to prove my love for you, it does not cost me anything. So that you don't just, I'm giving you a parameter to measure your love. If you cannot show me what you have laid down for the kingdom, you are a hypocrite. I've abandoned everything I ever know. There are many of us just leaving certain friends for the excellency of the kingdom is a big problem. Don't say you love him. Come on now. You are making God look too cheap. There is a way a man can sacrifice so much for his wife or any lady he loves. That lady knows that this man loves me. And even if it is Gary, they will sit and drink together. Because this is all surpassing love. Hallelujah. Are you getting me? Behold what manner the extent, the testament of God's decree of love for mankind. When he sent his only son, he said, he looked around heaven. What is my greatest investment? And he saw that his greatest investment is the world. That's the world that created the universe. He said, if I give angels, it's too cheap. It's not enough. What is my greatest investment in my all-surpassing deity? And he took his son. He said, man, look at this. This is my proof that I truly love you. In other words, love is not just by saying, I love you. Every time you say you love God, he says, bring it out. The archives of the pain that you've gone through for me. The archives of the persecutions, the criticisms, all the things that you have gone through for me. Where are the scornings and the scourgings? That's why Paul said, let no man trouble me. My love for God has been proven. I bear in my body. There is a mark on account of my love. And this is the mark that demons see and run away. Because every time they see, they know this is a lover of God. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are many people who claim they love God. Your money has not gone down for the church. There is nothing in you. Not your finances. Not your life. Not your sacrifice. People grumble and, and complain because of work and service in the house of God. Let me tell you something. If it does not cost you, it is not love. Hallelujah. If it does not cost you, it is not love. The question that I have is that what is your proof of your passion? There is proof of passion. Your desire for the house of God. The David sat down. Listen, listen. This is a king. Oh, beautiful. Listen. This is a king. Has everything any man can dream about. And he just sat down because of his insatiable love for God. He said, ah, how can I be in a palace like this? And God does not have a house. This is love speaking. Are you getting my point? This is passionate love speaking. He said, I must build God a house. He said, Lord, although you sit in the heavens 
and you cannot inhabit the earth, but I will build you a place. Find it as a resting place in the earth. Hallelujah. Listen, let me prove to you that David truly loved God. And I will justify God's statement that he's a man after his heart. To an extent that God said, David, I see your passion. Do you know that when you love somebody and he abuses that love, it will pain you? Listen to what happened to David. God looked at him and said, you have shed too much blood. You won't build. David would have said, all right, that's it. I'm not the one who will shine. But he said, no problem. Even if it's not me that will build, I will bring the resources and leave it. I just love you such that whether I'm in the picture or not, it's irrelevant. Let your cause be advanced. And God said, come on. Even Moses, the meek man, God did not testify that he was a man after his heart. He stood in the, in, in the, in the glory for 40 days. In fact, a total of 120 days. Yet, there was no testimony. Elijah, the prophet who called fire from heaven, never had a testimony that he loved God. And Enoch was not, for he walked with God. Hallelujah. Are you getting my point? Your love for God. There must be sacrifice. There must be sacrifice as a proof that you love God. Show me the scars that are a proof of your passion for Him. We like comfort. We live in a generation of absolute comfort. We want comfort on every side and that's wonderful. It's God's desire for us. But let me tell you, in this kingdom, you must come to a point where your love becomes visible. You have a job that is giving you 500,000 and another one is giving you 100,000 and God says, go on account of my sake. There is something that I want to do there. And you say, Lord, I'm, I'm forgoing 400,000. People will insult me and call me a fool. But for the excellency of my passion for you. Are you getting what I'm saying? The body of Christ today doesn't... We only understand the language of love as eros. This lustful love. This lustful crave. We organize conferences and summits. Help me with the mic. And, and all kinds of meetings to prove to people that we love God. But all of these things are just jargons. The Bible says they call unto me with their lips. But their hearts are far away from me. Show me the sacrifice you made in this conference as a proof that you love God. There is no pretense about it. Show me the sacrifice you made in prayer. The sacrifice you made in your giving. The sacrifice you made in making sure that everything works out. And I will tell you your degree of passion for God. I love you. I can never ever do without you. I love you, Lord. I can never ever do without you. I love you. I love you. I can never ever do without you. How I love to worship you. How I love to live for you. And even though it hurts me for every step I take. And even though it pains me for every move I make. This is my point. I love you, Lord. I can never ever do without you. I love you. I can never ever do without you. I love you. I love you. I can never ever do without you. Let me tell you. I told God, I said, whatever I cannot give to you as a proof of my love, including my life, please let me know. I've said this for years and I mean it. If God tells me right now, go and close up ministry or close up whatever, I tell you to God who made me, before 4 o'clock, you'll hear that part of everything. 
and I want to sit down happily. I belong to you. I belong to you. One time I was preparing, going for a program. They had prayed and prepared for me and all of that. And it was a very major meeting somewhere. And while I was taking my bath, the Lord told me, just take your bath and spend time in my presence. I said, Lord, but think about all of these people. It's the same agenda. And at a point, I just felt guilty. I am a bride to this husband. And it is given for every wife to submit and be faithful. And I told him, Lord, yes, sir, this is your agenda. I told the protocol, please call them, apologize. Just tell them, I'm a madman. This is my life. It's, I don't know how to explain to you, but I'm really sorry I cannot make this meeting. And I cried when I did that because in my heart, truly, I wanted to bless the people. They misunderstood me, but this is the excellency of my love for you. What can you give up to enter this realm that only few people can step into? Hallelujah. Are you getting it now? This is not about power at all. This is not just about grace and all of that. Your love, the first parameter, when you're talking about the glory of the latter house, it's not just your ability to increase your capacity in prayer and all of that. There are prayer warriors that whose hearts are far from God. When, listen, when Potiphar's wife came and met Joseph, are you getting my point? And wanted to sleep with him and so on and so forth. What did Joseph say? He said, I cannot, how can I do this evil first against God? Right? And then against his, this man was a slave. But see his degree of passion and love for God. Hallelujah. How many times we compromise, we make so much noise in the midst of God's people. But then when we're alone, people cannot see how much sacrifice. Some of you for a relationship that makes no sense, has no head and tail, let God suffer for the guy to enjoy. And you say, I love you. Look at me, oh, because I'm going to say this is a conference. Hallelujah. There are many of us who can give up anything. Listen, this love test is the ultimate test. Abraham, take now your son that you waited 25 years. I want to do a love test because there is a generational blessing you will pioneer. And it doesn't just come. Abraham had been a faithful person. But now God said, after waiting 25 years, Hallelujah. Take that son. Listen. It's not enough to take the son. He didn't even tell him the mountain. He said, be going. As you are going, I will show you eventually. And the Bible says he rose up early. Not late. Not arguing and doing all of this. He rose up, carried the child and was on his way. I can imagine. The man was just wondering, what would the society say about him? He said, for the excellency of my love, let's go. When they got to the mountain, he told the servant, please wait behind so that you don't interrupt my love when we get up here. Let your compassion not make you think I'm out of my mind. And when they got here, he looked at his son that came from him and looked at him. I can imagine Isaac saying, Daddy, what did I do? And he said, Son, you didn't do anything. It's what he did for me that is making me do this. When I was without you, he did something. I love you, but I'm passionate about him. Come on now. Everybody in your life must know that you love God more than them. It's not a thing of embarrassment. It must be very clear. Solidarity has made a lot of people not to enter some realms of glory because they want to belong. Ah! When it comes to my love for God, stay out. Stay out. Whoever you are, whatever you have, whatever you can do is irrelevant. As far as my love for God is, I can tear this clothes into pieces, whether it's one million. If it takes me rolling, no problem. David knew that when he was nothing, a shepherd boy, that was why he danced before God. And the arrogant daughter of Saul looked at him and said, Mr. Man, you are embarrassing yourself. There is a protocol of kings. And he said, I'm dancing before the God that took the kingdom from your father and gave to me. Hallelujah. I love him, oh. I love him. I love him. I love him with all my heart. I love him. I will never abuse anything he gives me. I love him. I cried this. I, this was my message this morning. When I got up this morning, I just said, Lord, I love you. 
you know this. I love you. I love you. Let the peace of my passion fall on your people as I talk to them. When you see a man and you see God doing certain things in his life, find out his love life first. Many people just hear that a man of God fasted 30 days, 40 days. They now carry their errors that lost. See, a wrong motive can lead you to do spiritual things. It doesn't mean you will receive the reward. That's why so many people come back after 70, 100 days of fasting and say, you taught something. Because me, I fasted 70. You, you fasted 40. It's about the love test. There are three that will remain. Faith, hope, love. He said, but the greatest is love. In my little work with God, this has been the ultimate determinant of everything. Power, grace, influence, whatever it is, this love. There are many factors, but let me tell you, this love is number one. There are things you never pray about that will come on account of your love for God. Many of us pay for everything in the kingdom because our love is questioning. The Bible says these kinds of people, before they call, I will answer. There are some people that will make God shut a nation because someone touched them. That love. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You still have a few minutes. What is your degree of love for God? Another way of asking it is, what have you exalted above him? That is the thing you truly love. Some of us is money. This money thing. This money thing has killed and destroyed a lot of people. You want to test a man's love for God? Test him with money. There are men who have overcome women. They are not even born again. But when it comes to women, it's okay. But this, there are people who can kill for money. Hallelujah. The day God gives you an instruction says empty your account ah that day you will buy and cars you say no way this is not god god cannot do this the kingdom of god is in righteousness it's and you start quoting all kinds of scriptures and god will never talk to you beyond your last level of obedience with him please are you listening to me this is very very powerful in my little life, I've had a few people, they come around our ministry and when they come, they are just waiting for the program to finish. And they say, I want to see you. I've had this and that and that. And please, I want this and that. And, and I'm looking at them. And I say, do you truly love God? Say, yes, before you finish, he does not. If you truly love God, you will not be quick to answer because you know the implication of what it takes. When people ask you, do you love God? And you just nod. You don't know the implication. Hallelujah. When you see a man celebrating 50 years of marriage with his wife, right? And he says, I love this woman. Look up, please. Maybe for certain people. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe for certain people. Do you know that in the course of that marriage, maybe the woman, God forbid, it's just in an example, and this, had cancer. And maybe they caught one part of her breast. Correct? But the man is celebrating 60 years with her and he's saying, even if I have to do it again, you are the one. Is that one is that one just emotions? You think that one is emotions? Or a man on a wheelchair and the wife is walking, beautiful, gorgeous young woman looks at this man who is almost dead. You are wondering what is still alive. It's just his eyes that are moving. And he said, I love this man. And if I'm to marry another in another life again, it will still be this person. That's passion. That's love. That love has been tested and proven through time. This is the reason why many marriages do not last. Are you getting my point? It's easy to see a very beautiful lady and just say, you know I love you, but and the lady say, you know I love you too. They don't even know what they just said to one another. As the years unfold, the gravity of that commitment will be tested. This is how it is. When you're walking in the spirit, Oh Lord, use me. You know, I hear people pray and they say, like John Knox. They say, give me Scotland. I said, be careful, oh. Find out the story of John Knox. But you must come to a point where you say, Lord, I love you. And when God allows a few things and sees how you manage certain things, He will look and say, this person loves me. 
sky. When, when you can prove your trustworthiness of God, there is nothing He cannot give you. It will happen overnight. See, this is why you see certain ministries. Let me give you a big secret. You see a ministry moving quietly, patiently at the normal pace. But a season comes. All of a sudden, even the geo cannot tell you what happened. Numerical increase, increase in grace, increase in loyalty, something happened. He passed a test and it's a love test. Many of us for years, we've passed faith tests, we've passed prayer tests, we've passed different kinds of tests, but this love test. Say in the name of Jesus, I surrender everything I am and everything I have to prove my love for him. Everything I am, everything I have, I love him. I love him with my life. I love him more than ministry. That must become your song through the ages. And you will see power you cannot account for. You will see results you cannot explain. You will see levels of glory that even you, you cannot tell. I, I don't know what is happening. This is what happens when God finds people who love Him truly and passionately. Number two, Psalm 25 verse 14. I'm just sharing with you keys. I want to be very practical. Am I blessing you this morning? Hallelujah. Psalm 25 verse 14. King of my life, you are my all, and I live for you alone. King of my life, you have my all, and I lay my life for you. My heart is yours. My mind is yours. My will is yours. You're the king of my life. You're the king of my life. Let me show you a powerful secret in the Bible. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 25. Verse 14. It's projected. Can you read? One, two, read. The second thing is the fear of the Lord. Everybody write. The second requirement for accessing levels of glory is the fear of the Lord. The Hebrew word is Yirat Adonai. The fear of the Lord. Another word is the spirit of reverence. It's not enough to believe in God. The Bible says the secret of the Lord. Are with them. Or is with them. That fear him. And he will show them certain things. They will look for it. He will bring it to their comprehension. The secret of the Lord. Are with them that fear him. Listen, do you know that among in Isaiah 11, we have what we call the seven spirits of God, right? Or the seven manifestations of the Holy Spirit. And we have the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of dominion, right? The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of what? Counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge. And the last is the fear of the Lord. That means there is a walking of the Holy Ghost in you that can birth the fear of God. Hallelujah. Everybody say the fear of the Lord. Not fear as in terror or trembling or running away from God, but respect, honor, value, worth. We've experienced the spirit of dominion, Pastor. People have done lots of things. We've experienced wisdom and all of that, but the fear of the Lord 
this is what is missing in a very great dimension in the body of Christ. People no longer fear God. In fact, some never had the fear of God. They had faith. They believed in God. The fear of God is what will make a man turn from iniquity. Iniquity is not necessarily seen as in transgression. Iniquity is a state of the heart. So even if you have not acted it out, the heart, he said, if I cherish iniquity, Psalm 66, verse 18, in my heart the Lord would not have heard me. Iniquity. Iniquity. A willful, perpetual state of rebellion. It may still be enshrined in your heart because opportunity has not been given for it to manifest. But it doesn't mean it's not here. Everybody say the fear of the Lord. You must have an experience with God that will burst the fear of the Lord. That's why you hear of pastors sleeping around, all kinds of people in churches sleeping around, doing all kinds of crazy things. A pastor coming to meet a member, collecting his ATM, going to go and withdraw his money. You know, all kinds of stupid things that happen in the body of Christ. Young and old, fathers and sons alike, is because people lack Yirat Adonai, the fear of God. It's not about struggling to say, I will sleep with this lady, I'm claiming it, I will sleep, I will. This is nonsense. There is a revelation that comes upon you, that keeps you in check. Pride and arrogance that you see in the body, all kinds of people, this arrogance, whether for results or no result, whatever it is, is as a result of the absence of the fear of God. There is an experience that the Holy Spirit can bring. Even if they call you Bishop Joshua Selman, or Pope Joshua Selman, or Prophet, whatever kind of garbage that they carry, to deceive a lot of people with let me tell you it will have no effect are you getting my point it is the fear of god the bible says when the fear of god is at work in you you start being wise it's in the bible the fear of the lord is the beginning that means any man that thinks he's wise and it did not come as a result of the fear of god is foolish it's not yet wise the fear of god will make you to make quality decisions How much of the fear of God do you have? Is the fear of God that will make a man of God? You know, <laughs> ah, God has many children. I don't know how God puts up with us. I don't know how God puts up with the heterogeneous kinds of men of God around the body of Christ. Hallelujah. There are all kinds of people who do so many things because of a lack of the fear of God. Many wrong things. Many things that should not be thought of as believers. The fear of God is what will keep you. You are in a relationship. You know this guy is not born again. You know that he's going to spoil your life. And you know you are not the Holy Spirit. Meaning you don't have the ability in yourself to change the person. It's the fear of God that will make you pack your load and go. You must have an experience with God that births the fear of God. This is why God can never commit certain secrets to certain people. Because they do not have the fear of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's the fear of God that will make you as a Christian. Not to go and say, I'm looking for a job. And somebody will say, you know what to do. All kinds of bribery. All kinds of corruption that happen in the body of Christ. People do un unspeakable things. The fear of God. Everybody say the fear of God. Is the fear of God that makes you to respect authorities around you. You know, we have lots of people in the body of Christ. Now, I know that there are many men of God who have just taught their Alpha and Omega and all of that. But let me tell you the truth. When you rise against authority, whether you are right or wrong, God will deal with you first before looking into the matter. It's in the Bible. Aaron and Miriam. Right? The fear of God. Westernization has brought away the sacredness of Christianity. You see, this thing people call holiness, the reason why it became religion is because they took the fear of God out of it. And they started doing a lot of rituals. Right? There is no true holiness without the fear of God. It's the fear of God that births holiness. Do you have the fear of God? In your life you want to see the glory of God you must have the fear of God the fear of God makes you straight who you are in the secret 
is who you are outside. There are many of us, our lives are not predictable. We are not straight. Nobody can. You are not reliable. You are not dependable. And it's because you do not have the fear of God. The pastor cannot assign tasks because he doesn't even know what you can do and say. Your tendencies are enormous. The fear of God prunes out tendencies in you and it gives you strength. Hallelujah. The fear of God. That's what will make God give you a heavy anointing and a heavy unction and you will know that it will not be mismanaged. Hallelujah. The fear of God is what will make him show you something. Open your eyes. Give you the eyes of an eagle to see certain things. God will give you authority. Give you influence. All of these are products of the fear of God. And this latter house will be a house that truly fears God. Jirat Adonai. Hallelujah. God emphasized the subject of the fear of Him to the Jews. He said it again and again that there were grave consequences for taking God for granted. And some of these revelations, now I'm not against revelations that try to teach us our oneness with Christ. But it must be balanced because it is the perverted version of this revelation that has made a lot of people believe we are equal with God. So I can push him and he can push me back. Hallelujah. Lots of people give God conditions, do all kinds of things. When you have the fear of God, you will revive him. You will know that although he has made me a partaker of his divine nature, I choose to submit to his governing influence. It's the fear of God that opens up the kingly dimension of God in your life. Hallelujah. So every time God commits membership like this to a ministry, the fear of God is what will keep the man to know that I must, I must pay whatever price to make sure they receive the truth, no pranks, no gimmicks. It is the fear of God that will stop a man from going to go and get charm, right? Because he's looking for power or looking for all kinds of things. It was the lack of the fear of God that made Hophni and Phinehas. Remember in scriptures? They were supposed to just dip the fork, take whatever comes out, that's their portion. But at the time they said, look, we have stayed so long. Familiarity also corrupts the authentic revelation of the fear of God. Familiarity. You are so familiar with him. Is he falling down? Is he rising up? Is it Rema? Is it whatever? Many people get so familiar with God. Every time I finish my ministrations, when I go back home, I get down on my knees and I said, Lord, it's been a few years serving you, but I will never be familiar with your presence. Hallelujah. And I tell him it's a privilege. I'm aware you can do without me. Before I was born, great things have happened in the body of Christ. I have read them. I will be stupid to believe that without me, you cannot do much. You can. Hallelujah. Everybody say, Lord, put your fear in my life. Yes. Put your fear in my life. The fear of God that will make people not come and stand on stage and give all kinds of lying testimonies, garbages, things that didn't happen. There are ministries that promote stories that are not real, didn't happen. I always tell our media department, make sure that when you are taking testimonies or posting anything as much as possible, let it be verified. Don't come and just make noise. And a lot of people call it marketing. They call it advertisement. They learned it from ministers, ministers, um, ministers what do they call it now ministers advice pastors conferences where somebody just comes up ships himself down with lack of discernment from us or from wherever and comes to now stand and intimidate everybody with phone and grammar and all kinds of things and now they keep deceiving people who are already growing in the fear of god and they tell them the reason why you are not expanding is because you are not creating structures and we begin to run ministry as if we are running a business enterprise the Bible says, ensure that the house is built according to pattern. It's the fear of God that will keep you to build a house according to pattern. No matter how slow it is. We're in a generation where people are saluting how fast they build houses. I built a church in two days. I built a church in this and that. It's irrelevant. Did you build it according to pattern? 
because when the shaking comes, everything that God see every time you build according to pattern, the image of God is on that building. So when God comes and doesn't find Himself, that's why He asks Cain, "You are naked. I'm not seeing a reflection of me in you. Where did it go to? Something suddenly happened. The fear of God, the secrets of the Lord." are with them that fear him and he will show them his covenant you want to access secrets in the spirit have the fear of god you must have the fear of god the fear of the lord is to depart from evil to depart from iniquity the book of proverbs tells us you must fear god with your life you must have that spirit of reverence that sacredness around your life there are many people in church and 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 please have been criticized a lot for saying this. People have been saying that it's not reasonable. All kinds of secular junks, all kinds of pornographic. You check the phones of people. Pastor, some of these people are pastors. Go and see the kinds of things in their house. And people say, no problem. It's just grace. Once you are born again, you are born again. Just forget about all of that. It doesn't matter. It matters. It matters. When it comes to the Lordship of Christ, there is a doing that backs it. Why do you call me Lord and will not do? Will not do. Your life must be proof. Some of us don't have control over our spirit. The Bible says a man who does not have control over his spirit is like a city without walls. Everything just rides in and out of your life. You must create standards and it's the fear of God that will bring it. Hallelujah. Many of us, yesterday now was Valentine's. Only God knows what, well, a conference was also, some of us were here. But only God knows what would have happened. You say believers do lots of things and you are wanting, come on. Did you forget the message you had? What happened? A lady goes to a guy's house. She's going to pass the night. She knows he will sleep with her. She's aware. She's not mad. They didn't put drug in and, and they are aware. The fear of God is not there. And the brother, Sunday is church. Saturday night is there. Don't say it does not matter. This is why we don't see authentic power. That's why people cannot access deep spiritual things. Right now we preach messages that say everybody. It happens to everybody. All these American messages we have brought. It happens to everybody. You must know the psychological position of the person. At the point the lady was in the room. Then what is the purpose of the Holy Spirit? He says, I pray for you that you be strengthened in your inner man. What is the purpose of all these tongues if it does not translate into a quality of life that is not possible for the natural man? Do you believe what I'm sharing? The fear of God will make you hate what God hates and love what He loves, even, with, even without supervision. Many of us must be supervised to walk in the way of the Spirit. And anytime there is no supervision, there are lots of nasty things we can do. Friends just come and they say, please, can we go somewhere? And you don't want to go. They say, you, Seb, are we not all Christians? We are all King's glory members. What is wrong with saying no? There is grace that empowers men to say no. The Bible says the grace of God has appeared unto all men, teaching us to say no. Yes cannot just be the answer every time. Everybody say, I receive the fear of God. This revelation is birthing the fear of God in you. So many men of God stand on the pulpit, teach on holiness, do lots of things, make all kinds of religious noise, but their lives, the things that they do, they travel for ministrations and do all kinds of perversion, all kinds of sinful things. You need to sit down and hear men of God talking about money and you are wondering, are these people born again? They sit down and say stupid and foolish things. How much did they raise in the church? How much is going to be my court? How, okay, let's negotiate. These are men of God. Anointed. And everybody just comes and says, let's shout hallelujah. God told me this and that. This is why their prophecies do not come to pass. But when you stay in His presence, there is that truthfulness in your heart. And some of us are already emulating these nasty things. This conference is bringing a change in your life. There is a circumcision happening this morning. A cutting away of something. Hallelujah. The fear of God. 
you must have an experience that will burst the fear of God in your life. The fear of God will make you walk in light and in the presence of God. The fear of God will create constraints in your life. Constraints in your life. Constraints in your life. That's why the church has very little impact on society. Because there is no difference. The only difference is our praying in tongues. And the falling under the anointing that we do. It has even become a, a subject of mockery. They act Nigerian films with it. They do lots of things with it. They do all kinds of things to mock the man of God. And many demons come around our churches. You know, you know when I speak, I don't speak just for King's glory. I get my point. I'm just speaking apostolically. But many demons, that's why a man of God can be in church. All kinds of demonic things are happening. And you are praying, you are worshipping, people are crying. But these demons are wondering, what is going on? This is not the kind of threat we used to receive. How come they have become so comfortable in the body of Christ? Light cannot confront darkness again. Because you can only judge disobedience when your obedience is complete. Jesus said, Satan came to me searching for anything that belongs to him, not finding it. You only conquer death when life is at work in you. Hallelujah. But that's the true spirit of holiness, birthed by the fear of God. Somebody comes and is gossiping about somebody to you. What is supposed to be your response? Hold the person's hand and say, let's pray for the person. Say, you lead us in the prayer. You that brought the gossip, lead us in that prayer. Hallelujah. Listen, you must be determined that your life will be straight. Let's not keep chorusing the glory of the latter house. These are the principles of the glory. I'm teaching you the protocol of the glory. This is how to access the authentic glory of God. The fear of the Lord. It's one of my prayers when I pray. I say, Lord, birth your fear in me. I don't know my tendencies outside of you. I don't trust myself outside you. I don't even know what I can become. So help me. Number three, faithfulness. Maybe I'll just touch on this third one and then we'll pray. I still have a session tomorrow so we can take it from there. Are you learning something this morning? Everybody say faithfulness. First Corinthians 4 verse 1 and 2. Faithfulness. So many people want more. We sing songs about more in the kingdom. And that's wonderful. We want more glory. We want more power. We want more grace. More wisdom. More membership. More increase. More influence. Faithfulness is a big key. And it's going to be one of the keys for the glory of this latter house. Verse 1. Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and of the not owners of the stewards of the mystery those that God has trusted with mysteries verse 2 moreover it is required in stewards that a man be found everybody say faithful it is required. That means it is a requirement if you must be a true steward. If you want God to trust you with more, you must show your faithfulness at your current level. Are you getting my point now? Faithfulness. Another vital factor that is lacking in the body of Christ. Faithfulness. People come, they want more anointing, more grace. They put all kinds of administrative targets. We want 20,000 people this this, um, um, this year or this month or whatever. And that's very wonderful. There's a place for that. But let me tell you something. If you are not faithful at your current level of obedience, God himself will resist your progression. Because you are not being useful. Hallelujah. Say faithfulness. I found out that this word is a very serious word as far as committing things to people in the spirit this one is not just walking with god now 
This one is the management of spiritual things. Faithfulness. 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 You want to see more of the anointing of the Spirit in your life. You want to have more deeper access to this. You must be faithful. There are people you can see their track record. Over the years, you have seen that they have worked faithfully with God. At that level. But there are people who you can see a track record of unfaithfulness. Are you faithful? There was a conference like this last year. Something came upon you. Something was delivered. Track yourself. Have you been faithful? Just like Pastor said before I came up. It's not another conference to come next year again. So let's not just sing this as a song. Oh glory, glory. And now you are preparing for the six year anniversary. Faithfulness. Faithfulness is one key that sustains the glory of God in the life of people. Faithfulness. The ability to make the most of what you have now with gratitude and thanksgiving. Knowing that it is already prophesied that the path of the just is as a shining light. It's not something you die. You see, there are so many people and then again, especially ministers. Somebody, you got a job. You just finished school. God bless you and say, okay, get a job of 20,000. Start somewhere. And this impatience, you are not faithful. You are fighting with everybody in the school or in the company. And you say, Lord, I must be a CEO in this life. You will not be. I'm telling you, you will not be until you pass that faithfulness test. At every level, God will test you. He will go to... I'm going to show you from scripture because you must understand this one. I know that not everybody here may be a member of King's Glory Ministries. There are some, maybe pastors and ministers scattered around. I'm sure some of you just came with a lot of zeal from your different ministries. What can I catch that I'll run with for one year? Sit quietly and let me educate some things out of your mind. Because many of us have, have in the name of wrong mentorship, we've received all kinds of garbages by people. Question. How did you grow and become an adult? For how many years have you been eating every day except when you are fasting? Did you ever complain? Faithfulness. You take your bath every day, eat every day, right? Do the same things every day and look at what it has produced. Your faithfulness changed a baby and made an adult out of that baby. Faithfulness. You must be unfaithful. If God gives you this level of anointing, He's watching. Watching your dispensing it. Watching your faithfulness. Watching everything. And then He will measure a thousand cubits for you again. And you go deeper. Some people have remained at the same level for a long time. And now I'm not just talking about ministers who are just starting. There are ministers and some of them are even fathers in the faith. You know they've not backslidden but you know that they stopped moving up. Something happened. Hallelujah. I should be able to see your life next year and know that there is a shift. You shifted. Something happened. Faithfulness. Let's look at one scripture. Luke 16. Jesus. Luke 16. I receive grace to be faithful. Luke 16. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God is talking to us in a very solemn but powerful way this morning. Verse 10. Verse 10. 10. Can we read? One to read. He that is faithful in that which is least is also faithful in much. And he that is unjust in that which is least is... Okay, just stop here for a while and let me explain this. Notice the English of the Bible. It didn't say he that is faithful in least will be. He said it's already. In other words, I can see your next level by your management of your current level. This is scripture. It, it says he that is faithful in least is also faithful in much. 
In other words, show me, David, how much you will be a king. Let me see what you are doing with the sheep in the wilderness. Let me see the way you tend. Let me see the way you protect them. Let me see the way you provide. You are already writing your exams for the palace. Are you getting my point? David was faithful. Nobody saw him. Nobody came to supervise him, but he was faithful. He taught the lion, he taught the bear, he risked his life. He showed that he could be a shepherd indeed. And God said, this is what I'm looking for. This is what I'm looking for. There are so many of us, you want to become pastors. You want to become this, are they not seeing what I'm doing? They are seeing, you are not trying. You are not being faithful, as simple as that. Faithfulness. Faithfulness. This is one big secret. That's why a ministry can remain at a particular level for 10 years and never move further. Because that is the only level they will make the most impact for the kingdom. If God takes them higher, they start nose diving. So God says, remain at this level and be faithful. But the day you step up in faithfulness, everything around you steps up to faithfulness. There are many of us, God has committed certain things in our lives. And everything just disappeared because we were not faithful. Some of us, God committed resources. Some, God committed opportunities. Some, even God committed anointings. There are many of us here. There were times in our lives we walked in certain dimensions. And you know that looking at it now, uh -uh, something happened on the way. You know what happened? Lack of faithfulness. It's lack of faithfulness that will bring about carelessness in people's lives. Faithfulness. 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 Matthew 25. Let's look at an interesting story that Jesus gave. Mm. We receive grace to be faithful. Matthew 25. Verse 14. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling into a far country who called his own servant and did what? Delivered unto them. Look at me. The Bible says that man had servants. Over time he had seen the various capacity and ability of those servants. Is that true? He was about to travel and he called all of them. He said you are all workers but I cannot trust you at the same level. Are you seeing that? The fact that you are a worker in the house of God. Let me tell you. God loves everybody, but He does not trust everybody. It takes a proving to be trusted. That's what happened to Abraham. He said, now I know. Not when he left his house. He would have changed his mind even on the mountain. Now I know that you fear me. And I swear that in blessing, I will bless you. Hallelujah. So this man gave on to one. Five. Let's read on. And unto one he gave five talents. Correct? And to another two. And to another one. To every man. What was the parameter that determined the level of giving? According to what? Their prayers. According to what? Their capacity to manage the resources. And you will see at the end of the parable that he was correct for doing what he did. That's why you see certain people. You see... You can see someone praying and fasting and what is looking for, God takes it and gives somebody else. And the person says, I prayed so much. I did so much. I didn't get it. You must be doing something for it to come this year. It's not supposed to come that way. Faithfulness. We don't study some of these things. And this is what should circuit many of us. Many of us from entering certain deep dimensions of glory. But I pray that from this conference, light will break out. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 15. According to his ability and straight it, he went away with his journey. Verse 16. And he that had received five talents went and traded with the same and made five talents. 17. And likewise he that had received two, he also gained other two. 18. But he that had received one went to the earth, dug it, and did so and so and so and so. Now, verse 20, the Bible says, of, of verse 19, After a long time, the Lord who 
whose uh, of those servants cometh and what reconnect that means he came to demand accountability listen to me at every phase of your life you will find seasons where god will call you and take periodic inventories of the grace that he has given you the opportunities that he has given you the access to life that he has given you and it is that test if you pass it you will be committed much if not the only thing God can do to you is to give you the gift of time to repeat that process again. I'm teaching you very deep progressions of the Christian experience. Hallelujah. Faithfulness. Faithfulness. Make sure that you take advantage of every opportunity you have. Be faithful. You want to step in the glory? You are an usher. You are cleaning the chairs from the depths of your heart. Whether anybody is here or not, you are doing it with all passion. I'm not doing it for pastor to see me. I'm not doing it for mama to see me. I'm doing it from the depths of my heart. If you are mopping the ground, you are doing it seriously. Time for your meeting. You are coming faithfulness. The Bible says you will reap what you sow, not where you sow. So even if you are not here tomorrow, it's an investment you have made in the spirit and it must follow you. There are lots of people who come and meet a man of God and say, I want to leave your ministry, I want to do this, I want to do this. I, I always, I had a man of God say, every time people are leaving his ministry, you will pray a prayer for them. May God raise men to do exactly what you did for me in my ministry. If you did well, that's supposed to be a very good prayer. Because you shout, Amen. Amen, no. I want, I served. I was faithful. But if you've not been faithful, you know that that's the, that prayer will torture you. Hallelujah. There are certain people who can never be faithful. You must make me a leader. You must make me a this. I want to be seen. I want to be on. The, no, you don't rise that way. The cheapest way to rise in the spirit is faithfulness. I fear people that are faithful. I have a deep sense of reverence for them. Because I know that that's the last time I'll see them at that level. Except scriptures is broken. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's the last time. Faithfulness. I know people that when we started out by the grace of God, their own was ministration. They wanted to go to radio, TV and do all of this. Gather sons and daughters and do all of these things. They were misusing the grace of God. Doing all kinds of things. Today, some of them see where God has taken us and some of them are angry. Some of them are wondering... They are saying this people is, is not supposed to be like this. Faithfulness, brothers and sisters. Faithfulness. Everybody say faithfulness. This is a word for somebody in this place. This is that one key. You came for this conference to say, Lord, why am I still here? Why am I still here? I've prayed. I've done everything that I know. Put it on door, Mike. You can now. You don't need to play strings again. Just put something here. Hallelujah. Don't mind me, he's our music director. Praise God. Lovely gentleman. Loves God with all his heart. Praise the Lord. I'm very faithful. Faithful to God. Faithful to the ministry. We are proud of him. And we know God is taking him far. The ministry is too small to determine his destiny. He's going far. Father. Yeah. This is the benefit and the spirit of faithfulness. When I started out in life, listen. As at 1994 or 95, I used to play keyboard for a man called Reverend Emmanuel Amechi. You know, sometimes people just think that when you see a man of God, you just believe that he evolved from the sky and just fell down and started ministry. You need to find out the story behind the glory. There have been proofs of faithfulness over time. Hallelujah. I, played, I was playing keyboard pastor for a man called Reverend Emmanuel Amechi. They were part of the people that went to preach for Obas and John. I would trek or take bike from my own money, huh? from my pocket, and go to the church. I had a local assembly. When we finish, I will go there and I'll be playing keyboard. Nobody ever tell, told me thank you once. Thank you. But God is my witness whom I serve with my conscience that I gave my best. I was never dreaming of ministry. All I knew was, Lord, it is a privilege. To serve. It was a small church. They just started. I gave my best to God. It's my own keyboard I'll carry. 
at home. It was not rent. I will carry it sometimes. I will trek. It was even my parents that they said, this, this is a young boy. This is too much for him. But I said they should leave me. The only thing I got as a reward from that ministry that I can remember is one bottle of Fanta when they were launching the overseers and this thing and one cassette. Hallelujah. And I was faithful. Faithful. If you are not faithful in another man's vineyard, what makes you believe that God will commit to you your own? This is a message to somebody. Faithfulness. People sit down, they are designing ministry. I want to do ministry. This ministry is not, it's not a sprint. It's a very serious marathon. You'll be tired one day. Except you are trained and built properly. Faithfulness. Faithfulness. Some of us, God gave you a small shop. You are there complaining and grumbling. How much am I getting? 300 naira the charge card. Oh God. And, and God says, you are, you are not. And you keep shouting, I'm a millionaire. It's, it's coming. It's not coming. It's not coming. I'm not prophesying doom. I'm just telling you, you are killing that prophecy. He told his son, Timothy Paul. He said, what a good warfare. It's not just prayer. Partner with that in your obedience. Align with this prophecy to come to pass in your life. God sees the way you are faithful in this recharge card business. You are making two two hundred naira a day, but you are faithful. You are saying, Lord, I will be faithful in tithing. I will be faithful in giving. One day you are sitting down and a brother comes. All you have is one thousand naira and is in a dead situation. And God tells you, just give it to him. This is your whole, oh God, I've been working five days. And you give God say, you did this for me. Increase his level. Somebody comes from nowhere. You just get up in the morning and come back with a blessing you cannot account for. Many of us are struggling too much. Could it be that we have neglected faithfulness? I know this looks very little. It doesn't look deep. But it controls much in the spirit. Say faithfulness. Are you just doing what you are doing in the ministry? Because you feel threatened by the presence of Pastor Kola or the leaders? Are you just doing what you are doing because, oh, well, you, he got you born again, so that solidarity, let me just behave myself here. Or have you gotten a revelation that is beyond King's glory? That you say, I'll be faithful with my life. I'll be faithful in service in the house of God. We want power. We want anointing. People create all kinds of meetings that God is not in it. God told me to put a meeting. Two people came for the meeting. Mr. Man, God told you to put up a meeting. You have inconvenienced everybody. You won't listen. There are people, their bodies are just pinching them. They claim they want to serve God. God is saying you are a hypocrite. You want relevance. You are tired of inferiority complex. And you are looking for a way to ease it off. They don't want to serve God. Because when you are faithful in little, you will be given much. So says the Bible. One more scripture. Luke 12. Let's look at what the Bible says in Luke 12. Somebody learning something this morning. The protocol of the glory this glory of the latter house it will not just come haphazardly there are laws there are principles <sighs> 41 from verse 41 there is a small note on my bible if you have my kind of bible you see it there it says parable of testing of servants parable of testing of servants listen then peter said unto him lord speakest thou this parable unto us or even to all and he says 42 and the lord said who then is that faithful and wise steward whom his lord shall make what ruler are you seeing the reward for faithfulness you start as a servant faithfulness makes you a ruler you can never be a ruler if you have not tasted servanthood I'm afraid of leaders who have never served anybody and anywhere. You are dangerous. Hallelujah. Very dangerous. It says, Whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household to give him a portion of food in due season. 
43 he said blessed is that servant whom his lord when he cometh shall find so doing and then 44 of a truth i say unto you that he will make him ruler over all that he has how many of you have had people come to work in your house maybe there are people that maybe you employed or people who just come to work in your house a time will come they will have more influence even more than certain workers because of their faithfulness they can enter your bedroom and mop the floor and see 10,000 and pick it. Just put it in an envelope and drop it there. Hallelujah. And one day you look at them and say, have you gone to school? You say, nobody to sponsor me. And you take it upon yourself to do things. There are families that people grew up there. They came as house helps. But it was the family that gave them out in marriage because of faithfulness. There are others who were born as sons but unfaithfulness drove them out they went somewhere do you know what faithfulness can do to you some of you in your workplace your boss employ you are always unfaithful grumbling you are not serious you are not working every time they say they want to promote people you are even smiling you see all kinds of visions of yourself being promoted and nothing happens it's amazing how we can see visions of lifting we are not partnering with the Holy Spirit for. Everybody comes with revelation. I saw this. I saw myself in suit. I was sitting on the boss's chair. <laughs> Ten years later, you are still there. Because it takes faithfulness. I had a vision. I saw myself sitting near Pastor Kola. What does that mean? Let me tell you what it means. It means, let me tell you straight to the point so that you don't even start dreaming. That means God is saying He has potentials to lift you. Your job is to be faithful. Right? Faithful. Hallelujah. Faithfulness. I remember last year when I came in and I saw Yavala. We were all together in Ebu. Many people. Kaziah. He was a prayer secretary of FCS. Faithfulness. There are many people that are too big, too big for nonsense. That's why they are too big for the next level of their life. Once you find yourself getting too big to humble yourself and serve, go for a retreat quick. You need a retreat as a matter of emergency. Hallelujah. Because in this kingdom, your faithfulness is your report card. That's your evidence that you deserve to get into the next level. I'm praying that at the end of this meeting that my God will take somebody to another level. Because for many of us, this is the one key that has stopped you. You've done other things, but he said one thing is needful. One thing. And Mary has chosen this thing. Other things are important, but at this point, one thing is needful. Faithfulness. 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 Because in the kingdom, I'll round up by saying this. Everything that happens in the kingdom is not an accomplishment. It's a trust. I think this is one of the biggest revelations that I've gotten in this kingdom, working with God. Listen, it's not necessarily a gift, but it's a trust. A man can have nothing except it be given to him. John 3. John 3, let's turn there and look at it. And then we'll pray. John 3 verse 27. Never forget this scripture. Success in the kingdom is not an achievement. It's a trust. Your ultimate pursuit as far as advancement in the glory is concerned is to make yourself trustworthy. When you are trustworthy, there is nothing God will not give you. God told me this years ago. He says, son, if you can let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except it be given to him. A man cannot receive any anointing on it until it is given. A man cannot receive any increase in membership until it is given. Satisfy all the principles you know. Do everything. There is a place for that. But the ultimate test is the test of being trustworthy. He says, Well done, good and faithful. Enter thou into my rest. I will commit to you. I will make you a ruler. And they took the talent from that one man and gave it to the one that was able to demonstrate that he had the greatest capacity. 
Hallelujah. Are you trustworthy? Can God trust you with the next level of glory? King's glory. Can God trust you with the next level of apostolic fire and grace and revival? Can you be trusted? It's not like it's not available. It's available. You don't claim it. It's a trust. God is speaking to everyone here. Can God trust you with the next level of financial prosperity? Do you think God can trust you with millions? Don't say yes. Sister, do you believe that God can trust you? You want God to trust you with a man of God. I want to marry a preacher. I had a dream and in, my, in, in the dream, I, I was with a man and we were all going around the city. Really? Can God trust you? To take care of that man or destroy him and his ministry, his anointing, the call of God, everything God has given. Hallelujah. Passion for God. Developing the fear of God. See, let me tell you, never think that this that I've taught is just some kind of milk. These are deep secrets. This is the protocol. For entering on limited levels of glory. Men will just watch you climb ladders. They can't see the ladder. But they cannot deny your transition. This has worked in my life. And everyone here who has been faithful. You will know that it has worked. Hallelujah. We are going to spend some time praying. And I really want us to pray. Hallelujah. Hold on, I'll ask you to stand up soon. But I, when, when it's time to pray, I want us to pray. I believe this is a prayer ministry. I know that we pray a lot. And this is the right moment to pray. When you share a word like this, is the time to cry out your heart. So that when somebody just come and say, I saw you. And in the vision that I saw, I ask yourself, am I partnering with prophecy? So that you don't turn later on and say the man is fake. He said a lie. He didn't say a lie. You did not understand the protocol. There is a way it works. This is how it works in the kingdom. I've read my Bible. And I can tell you these patterns are consistent. The love for God. The fear of the Lord. Hallelujah. And faithfulness. We are still going to talk about wisdom and understanding tomorrow. And then there's, there's still some other things I want to share. And we are going to pray. Every one of us is affected by one or two of these areas. And we are going to cry. Hallelujah. I don't know how you are going to do it. But you are going to cry. Please instrumentalists, can you come up? We are going to pray. We will cry in this place. And say, Lord, we are crying for the next level. We are tired of where we are. There must be a cry. There must be a hunger. Please, instrumentalists, the ones that can really play and flow with us, please. We don't want any distraction right now. Praise God. When I started out in life, today, let me tell you the truth with all humility. I am amazed to see what God is doing in my life. I hear the things that people say about me. I've had the privilege of access. I've been to many places and I see what God has done in such a short time. And sometimes I look at myself at the mirror and then I just start crying. I said, look at what God can do with anybody. This is what can happen to you if you are yielded. Let me tell you, there is nothing special about me. There is everything special about him. Is what he can make with a man who makes himself available. Today, by the grace of God, we've seen all kinds of fearful walkings. You know, the Bible says, fearful in praises, doing wonders. I have seen things that have made me afraid. The hand of God. He said, no man can do this work except God be with him. And tonight, the pastors in this ministry have made this program available so that somebody will be initiated into a realm of hunger.
anger and passion. Tonight, forget about your title. Forget about whatever. Whether you are a pastor in which ministry you are, you are most welcome. It's time to remove that title, throw it away, and let's cry before God. I don't want to know whether you are the commissioner for whatever. We are going to cry before God. You are going to humble yourself and break down and say, Lord, this is it. My spirit bears witness that this is the deficiency in my life. This is what has stopped me. This is not just about ministry. This is about, the glory is not about just ministry. The glory is about stepping into, there are many financial apostles that God wants to commit. Part of the things that will happen to the latter house. Let me tell you something. I keep telling God, hear this. Hear this. I, I must say this to you. Mike, this is transpose. I asked God a question. I said, Lord, why are you so meticulous when it comes to committing resources to people? And God took me to a journey. And when God finished that journey, I said, you are just indeed. You deserve to be God. I saw the reason why God can never, please listen to me, commit certain levels of blessings. We all need blessings. There are ministries that need all kinds of things, you know, and this and that. Your heart must be tied to God. At the beginning of this year, the Lord gave me an instruction. I'll just share just to bless us. And the Lord told me that we should carry every resource that belongs to the ministry. Everything. When I say everything, I don't mean maybe the ones for reserve of everything. And the Lord said we should sow it. Ah! You better hear God before taking that kind of step. Hallelujah. I called the treasurer. And I told her it's time to move to the next level. I was smiling. That's all I told her. I said, I'm happy. I've been waiting for this moment. See, if a rich man tells you, borrow me money, will you borrow him? Very fast, because you know he will give you. I said it at, and at our meeting yesterday. We are considering a series on financial dominion. If a rich man, somebody you know is a millionaire, if he says, please give me 1,000, very quickly you will give him. Because you know he will not return 1,000 for you. Hallelujah. And I was happy. I said, Lord, thank you. Thank you. And we have seen fearful. Well, we have seen the hand of God in very awesome, humbling ways. Let me tell you if you have love for God and the fear of God in your life, and you are faithful at the level you are, don't find yourself promoting yourself. Proverbs 31 31 let her walk for her at the gate. If you are speaking for your work, it's an error. Your work can speak. You say, ah, but nobody see me. Who told you? You cannot light a lamp and put it under a bushel. It's impossible. It will burn everything until it creates noise. We are going to pray. We are going to pray deeply for our hearts. The first prayer point is a prayer of rededication. Rise up on your feet, everybody. Go ahead and begin to pray and bless the Lord. Say, Jesus, thank you for granting cheese, cheese, cheese. You want to see greater levels of glory, greater levels of power. Go ahead.